venom extractions from ringed water cobras. They are also sometimes called banded water cobras. These guys are nausea annulata. These are really gorgeous snakes. And we have a compilation of several extraction videos here. So these guys, you may notice as you watch Jim working with them here that they're relatively quick moving little guys. They like to hood up. Um, they're, they're really fun to work with. And uh, he is going to use the tubing technique that those of you who watch our videos may have seen in some other videos because that helps to really keep them from uh, just being able to twist and thrash around as much. Though you'll see when we get to the part where he starts to pin the snakes that they are a little bit wiry even when they're within the tube. So this one is just hooding and not really wanting to go down enough to get into the tube. So we'll just kind of give him a minute here. There we go. And there's two different extraction times that you'll see in this video. And these first several videos are the first ones that we did. And he is using the hook that we have wrapped with uh, some like adhesive uh, vet wrap type stuff uh, to give some padding. And you can see the snake is really doing a great job of turning and biting. These guys are very flexible for a cobra. These are a, a considered a true cobra currently. And uh, you can see that they really have a lot of neck mobility. And this one was kind of flinging itself around a little bit. So they're a lot more flexible than many of the cobras that you just kind of see more frequently, like uh, monocled or Asian cobras, as far as how mobile and we flexible they are. Because I've torn everything. I don't about the skin. Yeah, I just I to see if it was complete. It's not. Yeah, it's complete. She's big enough to have babies. You just pick a nail. Well, there we go. That's gonna be a problem. Here. Somebody, somebody pick the hook up, please. They can turn really good. They come out too far and then yep. yep. That makes a turn really good. Oh, there we go. Okay. Did you get a reel? Yeah. Okay. And this is the female, right? Yep. Yeah, I would pick a man. Oh, yeah, we gotta have a tie and knot. This is interesting. Let me know if you want me to help you. Just poop down my boot. <laughs> like I saw venom drip and then I heard him pooping. <laughs> yeah.
That's the show how bad he is. She. Oh no, that is a male, isn't it? Yeah, that is a male. Yeah. So I'm glad we have a female here. So here's a little better view of one uh, getting tubed or trying to convince one to go in the tube. I personally really like the way these guys hood up like this. Just think it's cute. And there we go. So I've just kind of got to be convinced to kind of come down and see the opening. And so this is now a, a different extraction day and Jim has decided to use the pin stick instead of the hook for this part. And the reason for that is this just has a little bit wider surface. And so it makes it a little bit easier to prevent the snake from being able to twist and turn. But that one there just gave a great example of how mobile they are, even within the grip, Did you, if you saw it going left to right there. And here's one coming out of the tube. There's a balance between how far the snake can come out and how tightly it can contract against the tube. So both of those things kind of need to be balanced. And Jim has a preferred amount that he prefers them to come out. Uh, they don't always cooperate, obviously. You can see a little bit of the venom dripping there. The venom of these snakes is not especially well studied. We do know that they have a fairly strong neurotoxin, but there's really only a couple of studies on their venom. So hopefully this here will actually uh, go to help us understand a little bit more about the venom and about which antivenoms may work. These snakes are native to kind of central western Africa. Um, they're not responsible for a huge amount of bites in the wild because they are relatively shy. They spend a lot of time in or near water and in the associated vegetation and hiding spots that are near water. And then lastly here, this is a pair that I did put together. You may have heard Jim discussing introducing them uh, during one of the extractions when we were discussing the female. And so this is when I introduced a pair together. It's actually the female there. And she decides to go into the hide. At first the male really was not sure what to make of her. But uh, he kind of got over it and, and did get interested. So here's a little bit later. And they were exhibiting some courtship behavior. So the male is the one uh, that's on top. And you'll see him doing these subtle twitching motions. You can just see that there. So that kind of twitching motion is a thing that many snakes do. These guys just seem to be very subtle about it. It's really interesting to me how different they can be. And you can see he's kind of got his body stretched out over hers. They're not copulating or anything uh, here at this point, but this is the precursor to that.
she's got to decide whether or not she likes him. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more KRZ videos, and don't forget to hit the bell so you know when it's happening. Follow us on social media at KY Reptile Zoo for more scaly content. Lastly, come visit us in Slade, Kentucky, and check out our website at kyreptilesu.com for merch and booking programs. See ya!